welcome to week H. I am doing a hand standing hippo this week. And for the hippo, the colors I've chosen to use on my palette are black, titanium white, burnt sienna, burnt umber light, Van Dyke Brown Hue and Thalo Blue. I've decided that today I'm going to do this painting a little bit different to how I've done my other superset paintings. I'm going to do an underpainting first and then a series of glazes over the top. It might sound similar, but it is a little different. And that's because the underpainting style that I'm doing today is kind of like a grisaille. A grisaille is an underpainting that is usually monochromatic and often done in shades of grey or black hues. Grisailles can be done in other colours as well, like burnt sienna, burnt umber or even Payne's grey. But usually, no matter what colour is chosen, it's done monochromatic, meaning one colour. But today, I'm using burnt umber and burnt sienna. So I'm using two colours. It's not really monochromatic and not your traditional grisaille method either, but it does have that appearance to it. I chose to use the burnt sienna on top of the burnt umber because I'm not doing any opaque painting over the top of this underpainting. It's all going to be a series of glazes and the burnt sienna has that beautiful warm golden tone and I really want that to shine through. And that's why I said it was in the style of a grisaille because it's not a traditional grisaille method, but it does have the same sort of effect. Once I have finished all three layers, that is the underpainting and the glazes over the top, I'm going to put a photo of each stage side by side so you can see what a difference it all makes. And with this initial underpainting now all finished, it's time to move on to the next layer, which is our first glaze. For the first glaze, I'm using burnt umber with a touch of phthalo blue. For the white areas, I'm either leaving it white or I'm adding a touch of that burnt umber mix into the white and a smallest amount at that, just to take away from that stark white. I should mention that while I'm doing all these different gradients in my glaze, I am doing it wet on wet. This means while my burnt umber glaze is still wet, I'm adding in those white glaze details. This helps it blend easier and give it a softer appearance. This first layer of glazing is going to be my main layer of glaze. And I'm varying up the tone quite a bit here. I've used less water in the glaze in these areas around the eyes where it's naturally darker and then added more water for any of the lighter, more medium tones. You'll notice I'm now starting to add more white highlights. I know at the moment these highlights look really bold and quite stark. But that is where the beauty of my third layer comes in, the next glaze. But before I move on to that layer, I need to let this one completely dry. So, coffee time! Okay, for this next glaze, I'm using the burnt sienna again, but it's watered down a whole heap. It really does warm up the whole hippo. And now for those finishing touches on the hippo. A few soft white highlights. And this paint is quite watered down, so when it dries, it will be a little bit more subtle than what we see right here. 
I just love the depth and the texture that these glazes have given to our hippo's skin. A few final touches to the hippo's eyes and let's have a look at these layers side by side. The differences in the last two hippos are very subtle but really effective. Now onto the hippo's red high heels. And I do have a funny story about these high heels. I have based these off my favourite pair of red high heels. I have thickened up the heels just a little bit because it is a hippo that's wearing them and I think she might need just a little bit more support. The story behind these heels starts with the fact that I don't have them anymore. I was going to a friend's 40th birthday and the birthday party consisted of a winery tour. You know, the typical booze bus from winery to winery, taste the wines and have a great time. I'm sure you can work out where this is going. Although the order of events was kind of backwards. Our booze bus, I mean winery tour bus, had arrived. So I was walking across the road to get on board. But the heel of my high heels hit a crack somewhere along the road and I came down straight onto my knees like a ton of bricks. Like I said, complete backwards order of events. Normally people would be falling off the bus after a winery tour, not falling over before they even get to the bus. But on a plus side, my blood-stained knees perfectly matched my high heels and my handbag. At least I still have the handbag and it was completely unscathed. But seriously, who falls over on the way to the booze bus? Me. That's who. Moving on now to the hippo's hot pants. I decided to do these in that denim hot pants style. No funny story attached to these though. These were done completely from my mind. Although it probably would be a funny story if I tried to squeeze into a pair of these. The colours I'm using for the hippo's hot pants are phthalo blue, a bit of burnt umber and the smallest touch of black. I watered the paint down quite a bit and done those darkest areas first. I then watered down the paint even more to get that washed out denim colour. I had actually planned on doing a series of glazes over the top of the denim, much to the same that I'd done with the hippo. Another underpainting glaze series. But I liked the look of how the washed out denim colour turned out so much that I decided to just build up the darker areas that little bit more and leave that washed out look. It was one of those scenarios where you paint something and accidentally it turns out exactly how you wanted it. For the second glaze in those darker areas, I added a touch more burnt umber and black to give it that richer, fuller appearance. And this was all done using the wet on wet technique. I then cleaned off my brush and wiped away some of the excess paint to make it look worn down in those areas. A few more darker shadows for her little butt cheeks and then it's onto the hula hoop. For the hula hoop I'm using a straight Mars grey and added some black and a bit of burnt umber for those deep shadows. The burnt umber just helps warm up those shadows a little bit. And then of course I added some white to the plain Mars grey for those highlighted areas. I'm now using a off-white grey pencil to draw in those headphones. I decided to leave the drawing of the headphones until after I had completed the hippo. If I had drawn them in first, I would have had to try to paint around the outline as I was painting all those glazes on the hippo. So I thought it would just be easier to draw them in afterwards. The colours I'm using for the headphones are the same colours that I used for the hula hoop. And they were Mars Grey, Burnt Umber, Black and a touch of white. 
I haven't really based these headphones off anything. I've just drawn it from memory. I didn't even use a reference photo. And I know I said a lot in my last video about the importance of having reference photos or multiple even. And let this be an example of why you should have reference photos. The proportions and the perspective of these headphones aren't quite right. But hey, a hippo doing a handstand in hot pants and heels with a hula hoop and a handbag isn't quite right either. So let's just let this one be. At least that's what I'm going to tell myself. In the future, I will definitely learn from my own lessons. A few more little highlights to the headphones and it's finally on to the last piece, the hairbrush. I've base coated it in black and then using a Deerfoot stipple brush, I've dabbed on some burnt sienna and some white. Using a dirty brush, I've picked up some burnt umber to get a few shadows and then done another coat with a few white highlights. And would you look at that, I actually remembered to put the letter in again this week. This is starting to become a very good habit. And now that the H is done, so is our handstanding hippo painting. And she's done. Our handstanding hula hooping hippo wearing heels and headphones with a hairbrush and a handbag. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and don't forget that notification bell. It doesn't cost you a thing, and you get notified every time I upload a new video. And it really does help my channel out. And with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Bye.